All right, everybody, here we go. This is my post-market wrap-up on this uh, Wednesday, November 6, 2019. I have so much stuff to talk about. I don't even know where to begin with you. Uh, we got some pretty extraordinary news, uh, setbacks, failures, uh, and, and, and a lot of stuff. And I want to put a perspective on what we are hearing uh, it keeps getting louder and louder from both the Democrats and the Republicans. Plays right into this market, and I will prove to you right here and right now that not only does this play right into the market, but you are being played like a grand piano yet again. Uh, all right, let's um, let's start off with this. Uh, stocks finished at the flat line today. Nothing happened here. We had a we had a little rally, and then all of a sudden, I'm watching, you know, I had just gotten out of a trade. I was on the long end. Thank, thank goodness, I just had closed the trade. And all of a sudden, stocks started dropping. We recovered most of those losses throughout the day. But, but what happened here? Well, let's back up to yesterday. Yesterday, we found out that um, it, it appeared that there was going to be some kind of a trade truce between the United States and China. The market didn't like it. The market and the American people want a deal. We've been promised a deal. We, we were just told that we had a substantial phase one deal. Not only were we told that we had it, we were told by the president that it was the best deal that America has ever had. It, this deal never happened. It never was. It's a zero. Um, and today, we found out that not only is there not going to be a, a truce, it looks like, although that they are, they are talking about a truce, meaning we remove tariffs, everything stays the same. But apparently, the signing of this supposed phase one substantial deal that we already had is being pushed off to at least December. You can't make it up. You can't do it. Now, let's talk more about... China real quick. Uh, China, most of you are aware of this already, has been signing trade deals uh, with countries around the world for all kinds of things. They just signed a deal with France. They just signed a deal with Denmark. Um, but one for the American people remains elusive. China continues to play a game here um, and it's not, look, it, yeah, it looks like it's a game on the president, but it's a game on the people of the United States. Them making him look like an ass, a class A1 ass, over and over and over again. And I think they are loving it. Now, I know those of you that don't like President Trump uh, are probably cheering about this, but no, the president has it right, okay? We need a deal, a fair trade agreement. However, notice that we're not going through the World Trade Organization, which is how we would really settle these d disputes. It's kind of being, it's being played out on the public stage around the world to keep people, and me too, talking about it right now. It's a charade. It's not true like everything else that's going on here. Look, we could have had a deal already. This is some other thing that's going on here. Understand that. Again, trade deals are negotiated through the World Trade Organization. Uh, whatever's going on here between the President Trump and the President of China is just a joke. And China seems to be playing it in a way that's making our President and America look impotent. Absolutely impotent. While, they, while China goes out and signs deal after deal with country after country, and, and all we get is strung along. Uh, this, if this really is the art of the deal, the president needs to write a follow-up. Uh, it's the art of the failure, not just for him, but for the American people, period, the end. Um, now, <laughs> look, the game remains risk on here. Regardless of what the stock market today did today, I still think the market needs to give back a little bit, and maybe we'll see that the next day or two. I have no idea. I trade the market I have in front of me every day. Um, 
I don't hold positions overnight anymore. I don't care. I don't care if the market goes up. I don't care if the market goes down. So I don't, I don't, I don't give a damn. That's the truth. I'm going to make money either way. I know that for a fact. Will every trade I make be a winner? Absolutely not. It's impossible um, for anyone. Even if you, if it, algorithmic uh, trading platform, they don't win all the time either. Um, and again, with regard to algorithmic, algorithmic trading platforms, they're competing against each other. Um, not you or me who does not use an algorithm who are kind of using our brain. All right, anyway, um, so let's talk about a few other things here real quick. Uh, cryptocurrencies finished about flat. Precious metals, I think, caught a slight bid, although I hate talking about that too. And you're sitting here, I'm sitting here today watching Rick Santelli, other people talk about the debt market as if it's real. As if it's real, what a joke. Oh, the 10 years doing this, the two years doing this, blah, blah. I don't even talk about it. It's a non-issue because it's rigged to the highest order. We understand what the Fed is doing, inflating the debt bubble beyond belief. Now, I posted a snapshot earlier on uh, Twitter, Facebook, my chat room on my website, traderschoice.net. I posted it on LinkedIn of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet over the past few months since they started this new round of QE it is ballooning. It is ballooning. And that's what's keeping this market moving higher. Uh, and look, we're in free fall. There is no doubt about it. Um, as a matter of fact, let me go over a few things with you here. Um, here, let me go, I, here. People, this is no secret to you. But again, there are some that need you to believe that this is as good as it gets and we are booming. Yet again, another piece of abysmal economic news. I'm going to read this to you. U.S. productivity drops the most since fourth quarter of 2015, yet production costs are skyrocketing. But remember what the Fed survey said yesterday. Not only is there no inflation, but uh, you, as a citizen, because they did a survey, believe prices are coming down and they're going to continue to get lower. What a piece of propaganda. I mean, what a piece of propaganda. You can't make this stuff up. Oh, here we go. China and France sign a, a big deal with regard to agriculture and a whole bunch of other things. China signs another deal with Denmark uh, for uh, livestock. And what do we get? Zero. Absolute zero. It's pathetic. It's embarrassing for our country. It really is. I already talked about the balance sheet. The Federal Reserve's balance sheet is, is unfreaking believable. I already talked about how the signing of the phase one deal that we already had is now being pushed off again. Do you know why? China uh, wants tariffs removed. They want this truce first, uh, it seems. And I personally don't think we should agree to any kind of a truce here, despite the fact that we're getting nothing, and this trade war is costing us hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of billions of dollars. Um, we're not taking in a single dime. You notice that narrative has fallen off the radar? I explained to all of you months ago that the president's narrative that we were taking in hundreds of billions from China was a complete, total, and utter lie. Well, the lie has been exposed, henceforth the president can't talk about it anymore because he realizes you got smart. Yeah, that's the truth here. Um, let me see here. Yeah, uh, labor productivity declining in, in the factory sector for the second straight quarter as labor costs continue to skyrocket, but there's no inflation. You know that. It, it's, just, it's just crazy. Now, this guy, um, the founder of the world's largest hedge fund, um, is explaining. Here, let me say this here. I'm going to read this to you because I want you to hear this verbatim. So this is Ray Dalio. Most of you know who this guy is. Um, he is saying here, the world has gone mad with easy money and the system is broken. Well, I think it's about time that he got on the bandwagon here. I've only been explaining that for like forever. Uh, Ray, why don't you give me a call? Yeah, we'll talk, you and me. Um... You know, now I want to focus on something real quick here, people. And I'm going to read this to you, and I want you to think about it as I am reading it. Here we go. What 
what's missing from the entire spectrum of Democratic hopefuls agenda? You know, we're hearing a lot. We have an election less than a year away. All right. We're not hearing anything about some kind of a fix to the debt-based economic model. All these people are talking about is taxing these people to make the lives of these people better, etc., etc. People, this will not work, okay? Just moving around debt notes from here to there will not fix the core problem, which is the debt-based economic model. And the, all these people, they know it. They know it, and you are being played. What's the common thread here between the President of the United States and every single Democratic hopeful? Do you have a clue? It's massive debt expansion on an unprecedented scale. The President calling for rate cuts. The President hasn't said a single word, not a syllable, about the Federal Reserve involved in full on quantitative easing, pumping hundreds of billions into the debt market, inflating their balance sheet, and you know who owns it all? You do. All this debt is on your back. So there's the common thread here. In case you missed it somehow, if you did miss it somehow, you need to rethink. Look, I've explained to you that these cults, okay, the Democratic cult and the Republican cult are two heads of the same hideous animal, all right? Their interest lies in inflating the debt and empowering central banks, the Federal Reserve more specifically. They're working towards the same goal. I hope you understand that now. Whatever's coming out of this imbecile's mouth and coming out of the other imbecile's mouth on the opposite side, the other cult, is for one goal, people, to, again, continue to inflate we are the largest debtor nation in the history of the world. That's where the, the United States of America's claim to fame. I want you to think about that. So now that you know the common thread that lies between the Democratic cult and the Republican cult, well, maybe you'll have a clue, finally, as to what the real agenda is, something I've been explaining to you since time in freaking memorial. And I'm not even going to talk about it again, because if you don't know what it is by now, that's it. You're lost. Anyway, look, um, this is where we're at, people. Um, this environment is part of the final solution of both cults, now that you know who the cults are. Um to do whatever they can to empower. I don't care what comes out of their mouths right now. If you want to listen to Elizabeth Warren or one of those cult members explaining how they're going to do this and they're going to do that, no. they Believe me, none of this is going to happen. It's all part of the same agenda. Um, that is to support the military-industrial complex. That is to bring about more debt empowering the banks that run the Federal Reserve. Negative rates are coming, people. Just like our president is calling for, you think it's going to change if one of these Democratic cult members get in here? You are deluded. It's going to get much worse. We are going to watch debts and deficits explode to the point where you cannot believe. You are about to see a Federal Reserve that is already beyond nuclear go beyond hypernuclear with regard to uh, printing more debt notes. And moving these debt notes around from these group of people to another group of people is really going to fix the issue. If you bought that one from the Democratic hopefuls right now, <laughs> you might need a new IQ test. Um, I guarantee you, you lost a few IQ points over the last few months. There's no doubt about it. And the president is calling for the same thing, the common thread. The common thread. Follow it, and you will understand everything that's going on here. All right, people, look, um, I have an announcement to make. This will be the last video I do for this entire week. Um, I am taking tomorrow off, Thursday. I am taking Friday off, and I might even take the weekend off, too, uh, for my markets, a look-ahead segment. We'll see. Um, anyway, very rare for me to do it, but I'm doing it. 
Please share this video. I want you to think about what I've talk, spoken about here. Think about the common thread here. The, the fact that these cults, both of them, are working towards the same goal. And whatever comes out of their mouths uh, as candidates, just keep President Trump in mind. Remember Candidate Trump? Candidate Trump had it right. Candidate Trump explained exactly what was going on, how the Federal Reserve was propping up the market to make Obama look good, uh, and everything else connected to it. He explained how the stock market was a big, fat, ugly bubble. He explained how debts and deficits need to be reined in. All of it is gone. What has happened? The big, fat, ugly bubble has turned into the mega bubble of all time. The Federal Reserve is supporting him to issue more debt, calling for him to issue more debt in the form of getting the rates to go even lower. Don't you think this weighs on the market? A president of the United States saying, we need lower rates. We need to cut rates into the negative. What does that do? It allows the Fed to do their one job, that is to issue more debt. They're the happiest band of imbeciles on the face of the earth. And these imbeciles rule your freaking life. How? Via the cult on this side and via the cult on the other side who are trying to convince you that you need to pick, pick one of these cults because one of those cults is going to help you. Yeah. <laughs> this is where you are right now. All right, anyway, before I go on and on again, this is the last video I'm doing for the week. People, I'm going to leave you off with what I do every Friday because I believe this to the core of my being. And this guy right here loves you very much. That's the truth. Love each other, care about each other, and be charitable. And I, I'll see you maybe over the weekend. I might even take the weekend off as well. A little, a little downtime for me. I think, I, uh, I think I've earned it. Again, see you all soon. I'm out of here.